Well, hey everybody, Jimmy here from Michigan Out of Doors. Thanks for checking us out this week. We are gonna be doing another giveaway this week, a couple different hats, so all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel, comment and like on this week's show, and we'll get you entered to win one of our Michigan Out of Doors hats. Thanks so much for watching the show this week. Hope you enjoy. Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hello everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we have a brand new show lined up for you this week. Jordan's gonna take us to the northern part of the state where he tagged along with some steel headers for the day. They had a blast out there, you won't wanna miss that story. And speaking of fishing, Jimmy's got another fishing adventure in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have another fishing story on this week's show. And even though typically we'd be ice fishing this time of the year, just last week I was on Pentwater Lake chasing some perch. You won't want to miss that. And I think we have time for a bragging board as well. Lots of good stories on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By RBM Jigs, a Michigan-based company serving ice fishing anglers around the state and throughout the country. Specializing in ice fishing gear, RBM Jigs manufactures tungsten jigs, soft plastics, and much more. Online at lakeeffectlures.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan-based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. fish. Today we are in northwest Michigan uh, fishing a tributary to Lake Michigan and uh, we're gonna be fishing for steelhead out here. Uh, we are doing a mix of uh, center pin fishing so I've got a floating monofilament line on here going down to my bobber right there. Uh, for my weight system, I use a sliding uh, egg weight right there, going down to my first swivel. From right there, I'll go down to a, about a foot to two foot shot line uh, with some smaller shots spread out along there. And then we're going down to a bead, a nymph, a spawn bag, uh, just pegging that a couple inches above the hook. Uh, the pros of using this method is that with this heavier egg weight here, that's gonna get you down uh, for a majority of the ways into these holes. And then the shot pattern will pick up the rest of that depth, you know, varying, you know, from one to two feet from there. It's funny though, they haven't really been eating like on the first drift. Yep, yep, yeah, there yep. you go, nice. 
as I oh, say that. My goodness. Oh, son of a gun. As Cole says, they, they haven't really eat been on eating drift. on the first Never. drift. <laughs> well, not too much really happened there. Just uh, hook pulled out. And now it's in my glove. So there we go. Well, there's one. So wintertime fishing out here, uh, you know, hands get cold, cold weather conditions. You know, when you're spending a lot of time on the river, the more times you break off, the more times you spend retying and re-rigging, that's less time in the river. So one thing I do to kind of spend a little bit more time with your hook in the water is I'll set up these pre-rigs here and just tie your hook on there, snell it on, put your bead on there and wrap it through these foam uh, slots on there. And that way, if you break off or you want to switch out your bead, you're right there, ready to switch it out and keep fishing. All right. So funny enough, in this same location last year, did the same thing. Saw this fish sitting on the front side of this log jam down here, just cruising right there. And first drift down with a bead and a spawn bag, you decide to eat. There we go. Beautiful. All right. On the board. On the board. Last one so far. And now Take we got it. one to the net. Just straight boat side here. We'd already fished the main part of the hole right down there and decided to make one quick drift, kind of flirting with danger there next to the wood, and it paid off. Got a nice uh, young river steelhead here. Uh, it's a clipped hatchery fish. So this fish was raised somewhere in one of our Michigan hatcheries and here in the river now, coming up here to spawn and eat some salmon eggs, so. There's lots of different ways to catch steelhead this time of year. And although we focused mainly on the center pen setup, we use several different baits throughout the day. Generally, the spawn is not something I've used uh, the past few years. For the most part, I've seen beads just do just fine or the occasional jig and a wax worm. Um, it does kind of play into effect in dirtier water or for those fish that have a little bit more lock jaw, getting some scent out there in the water. We've seen it before where you fish beads through the hole and then you throw a spawn bag out, they get the spawn bag or the opposite. You're fishing spawn bags and then you just throw a loose bead out there in the hole or sometimes even a nymph like Cole's using today and then they decide to eat that. So it's really just throw the whole kitchen sink at them and figure out what that exact fish wants. So no really right or wrong thing to use out there for steelhead. Just whatever you like the most. Very cool. That's a great fish. We'll call her up Buck. Oh yeah. Beautiful. My guide, Luke, here, encouraged me after I was all hope was lost to make like one more cast and boom, there he was. Yeah. So listen to your guide, it's always a good idea. Our second fish of the day confirmed something we had been wondering about all morning. This fish showed signs of spawning, just like the first one we had caught. And although it's not unheard of for fish to spawn this time of year, it's pretty rare for mid-January. Normally around the state, you know, you'll expect to start seeing some of the winter steelhead spawning in that mid-February, end of February range. Uh, you know, peak spawn being March and April. But, you know, on these rare years where we have a warmer winter, those fish that came in around October and, you know, late September, they've been in the river for a while now and they see a little bump of the temperature this time of year and they're ready to spawn. So every fish that we've uh, landed so far, they've had marks on their sides and they've been working in the gravel. So. Pretty unique to see that for January 21. Beautiful Michigan winter steelhead here. Gorgeous fish. After a very successful morning, we decided to take a quick break for lunch with plans on fishing for the rest of the day. So here we have a nice piece of Alaska sockeye salmon, uh, wild from Bristol Bay. Caught this back in July up there. And uh, we're gonna cook this up. We got some soup, cheese, and crackers for us. Throw, throw some lemon on the salmon there, a little bit of seasonings, and see how it turns out. So right here we've got some fresh chopped parsley, and then I've got some dill, thyme, uh, salt and pepper, a little bit of brown sugar to get some caramelization in there. And that's pretty much it. As we made our way downriver, I noticed that these two were very particular about how they fished each hole. So I asked them what their strategy was when they pulled up on a new spot. So usually you start on the inside. 
Yep, you yep. definitely don't want to bomb it all the way across to the juiciest stuff right off the get-go, especially in wintertime, they sit on that inside sand seam and that slower water. Yep, they'll be closer than you think a lot of times, so you don't want to rush out there and you know risk the possibility of spooking your hole. You know, start out, you know, just barely stepping in the water a little bit, start fishing that hole close to you, then move your float deeper and deeper, start fishing further out. You don't want to start out trying to drift the whole duration of the hole. Even if it looks deep all the way through, uh, you don't want to drift the entire thing because you might get snagged up in the bottom top part. If you find a section that's, you know, 20, 25 feet long throughout the first part of that hole, focus five or six casts fishing Ooh, through there yeah. before you start venturing to doing those that, Superman uh, floats back, doing the entire yeah, duration of that backs. hole. Yep. That way you're covering the entire hole effectively. You want to mark out these holes like a grid. Right. You don't nice. want to just, you know, <laughs> randomly be casting in certain spots. You want to break it down so you know that you effectively fished cool through that down, entire down, hole. And if there was a fish there and it wanted to eat, so. he would have eaten it. Coming to you. Nicely done, Luke. Sweet. Gorgeous. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, that was on this uh, little hex nymph fly. Kind of a staple in the winter time when these fish start to get buggy. They've been in the river for a while, start to eat kind of the natural food chain. Uh, great little change up besides for beads and spawn bags. Worked on her. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Way oh. back there. Big fish, big butt. Nice. nice. Awesome. Woo -wee. That was a rodeo there. That was a hot fish. Whoa. He just hit the bobber and started running. No stopping him. So <laughs> he got us into a little log jam right there and we got lucky and pulled them out, but that's just the nature of these small rivers here is once that fish is on the line, be ready to run. You can kind of see we're out of breath from chasing them, cameraman included. So love it. Yeah, worth it. Sick. He's in the net and another, another gorgeous, gorgeous buck. buck. Yeah. Cool. Killing it. Yeah, it's a great workout <laughs> out here and in addition to the fishing. So love we'll it. catch our breath here and take some pictures, get some footage. <laughs> Got another gorgeous uh, buck steelhead right here. He is a wild fish, and you can tell by this adipose fin right here. So these are the really important spawners for this river system and all river systems in Michigan. So fishnet have that adipose on there. We love to let those ones go and let them go out there and spawn and create more fish for the future. If you get one that has that adipose clipped off on there, it'll be all the way flushed down to the fish. That's a good fish to take home if you want to keep a keep a fish for the family and have a nice steelhead dinner. But this guy's gonna go spawn and make some more for the future. Beautiful. Cool. He's probably tuckered out. Yep. Or not. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> Kind of our love for fishing over the past few years uh, has brought us to start guiding on these uh, rivers out here and uh, we're offering single day trips and we're actually going to set up something this year uh, to do all-inclusive hosted trips up here out of a lodge and provide all the food all the lodging uh, as well as guided trips so that's going to be perfect you know our our thinking is that we're going to have anglers not either they're they're starting out you know they're curious about fishing uh, don't have too much experience and really want to jumpstart their skill set or even the guys that you know they fish every single weekend but they just want to go out and have a guided trip experience see some new water around here we're going to fish like four or five different rivers and that's going to be a cool experience so i don't know cole if you have anything to kind of talk about that more uh no yeah just luke and i are up here trying to get this thing going uh both have our own guiding uh companies and uh just love taking people out onto these small water systems chasing steelhead as you can see they're a lot of fun they're a little crazy uh, but we have a good time out here and we love taking people and showing them kind of what it's all about beautiful michigan yeah. winter steelhead here gorgeous gorgeous buck got a little bit of spawning activity possibly on his belly there so very unique day. Neither of us were expecting to see this much uh, spring-like activity from these fish, but they've been happy to eat. And even though it's a little cold, here to play out there. The unseasonably warm winter has limited a lot of opportunities around the state, but it's also created a few as well. Special thanks to Luke and Cole for inviting me up for an incredible day of steelhead fishing here in northern Michigan.
Oh, it was a rodeo there. That was a hot fish. Whoa. He just hit the bobber and started running. No stopping him. So. <laughs> Well, typically this time of the year, we were doing pretty much all ice fishing. And although there is some good ice in the upper peninsula and the northern lower here in mid Michigan, we just haven't had cold enough weather until recently. Just last week, I was out on Petwater Lake chasing some perch. That's what he was, he was gonna just go here and I was gonna drop my <laughs> Well, last time I drove a boat, it was in Marathon, and it was warm, <laughs> and it was a week ago. <laughs> so Adam, what in the world are we doing here today? Well, we're going to go ice fishing without any ice. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, it's, uh, we've actually been going a little bit, uh, and basically doing exactly the same thing you would do ice fishing, but in a boat. Okay. And it's been, uh, it's been pretty good, so I guess when you, when you uh, don't have any ice and you really want to go ice fishing, this is what you have to do. <laughs> How'd you get sucked into this, Ryan? Well, um, I was told by Adam that they were catching some perch out here, so I decided work or fish, and I chose fishing. <laughs> I had been calling a lot of anglers over the past few weeks trying to find some safe ice, but when I heard that some of my buddies were catching perch on Pentwater Lake, well, I had to go check it out. So I, what I've been doing uh, is starting with a whole minnow on the bottom and then a half a minnow on the top, and then the other one I'll have a wiggler on the bottom and a half a minnow on the top. And uh, they haven't seemed to mind that the minnows are dead, which is kind of nice. So you don't have to seem to have to change them quite as much. Okay. These are just a little perch pounder rig, normal, normal rig. I got a green one on one and a red one on the other, so hopefully we'll find a combo that so works. You got a little bit of plastic on there too? Oh uh, yeah, there's like a little tinsel on there. Okay. On these. Minnows, wigglers, and waxworms were our baits today with two hooks per line. The first hour or so, well, we were skunked, but finally we had a bend in one of our lines. <laughs> this could be it. Oh, I'll get another bite. No, I'm in it. <laughs> Looks like a monster. Hey! hey! So, people are starting to get, have a little mutiny on the boat here. <laughs> I told them there was perch here. That is a dandy. Look at the goby that thing just spit up. Jeez, a oh, Pete's. Wow. Be the biggest perch in Pentwater Lake. <laughs> we might be using the wrong size bait. Jeez. <laughs> well, nice job, young fella. I got half a sandwich. We did move a couple of times to find some deeper water, and we were finding some fish. Not, it's not as big as Adam's, I'll tell you that right now. If you are. Ooh. Nice job, young man. The man said 15 minutes. How's your electronics working doing this way, Adam? They're doing good. It's, uh, you know, the, the ice fishing uh, transducers don't like to move around very much. They're not uh, really set up for that, but, um, you know, you'll see anything that looks like a line constant line like this here. This is a fish up top. Okay. These are fish. And then as you you know bring your baits down, it's all gonna show up as a line. That's a decent fish there. Oh, that's a keeper. Yeah. That'll do. Good. What? We got a double? Oh yeah. <laughs> big, big one. Well, I wasn't going to take wow. you guys to my good spot. <laughs> <laughs> right well, here. thanks for bringing us. Hoping we could get yeah. <laughs> That's why I didn't look like I was really good for it. Moved out a little deeper. 
usually kind of looking at flats, little flats on the edge of drop offs, and now we're kind of on the bottom of the, you know, the bottom of the drop here. Not so, much boat traffic today. Yeah, I'd say, uh, you know, pretty easy to maneuver. You don't really got to look out for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Big kiss, John. I'm surprised. <laughs> that might be the same fish. That's a good one. Ooh, that's a nice one. That is. White or yellow? Yellow. 1030 right on the top. Nice fish. Yeah. And they're all the same size. Just, just a little shy. Yep. Oh, So they're kind of hitting everything, aren't they? They're, they're kind of all over the place. The yeah, they're, you kind of got to just keep a keep a mixture of baits. I generally run the the wiggler on the bottom, since I th I feel like a wiggler is you know going to be on the bottom. So I don't know if there's any correlation that I my bottom hook catches the. Oh, got another bite here. Maybe. We have some wax worms as well. We've caught a few on that, but that crappie came on the on the wax worm, which normally you catch crappies on, you know, minnows. So I don't know. Sometimes I think we try to outfish or outthink uh. these, uh, you know, <laughs> pea-sized brain fish. Well, that is true. We are usually trying to figure out the fish and outsmart ourselves half the time. Today, each bait was working. The minnows probably caught the most, but the wigglers were a close second. It was good to be on the water, even on a snowy, wet day. I think we're the both those crappies to my black swimmers. Ooh. On the wiggler. Pretty fish. They are beautiful fish. And they taste as good as they look. All right, Adam, give me a wrap up for the day here. What, uh, how'd we do? Well, we had, a, we had a good day. We did a lot more sorting than we've been doing down here, but uh, beautiful uh, white belly perch. And when you can't go ice fishing and you want to go ice fishing, you got to bring a boat. <laughs> kind of a weird year. That's definitely a weird year. That's for sure. Hopefully we'll have some ice after this week. It looks like the weather's going to take a turn for the, well, for the worst for most people, but for the good for all of us ice fishermen. In the last few days, the weather is and has turned with a few single-digit days. So even though it may be ice soon, don't totally forget the boat. One thing about Michigan anglers, whether soft water or hard, they will find a way right here in Michigan's Out of Doors.
Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in upcoming weeks. We've got all sorts of great things headed your way. We'll take you out on a bunny hunt. We will check in with the DNR on how the mandatory deer check-in went this past season. And we'll introduce you to a young lady who's the very first registered woman to guide on the PM River. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. So lots of places you can be checking us out. And make sure you are joining us over the next couple of weeks. Lots of stuff that we are excited to bring you stories from all over the state of Michigan. If we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By Walker's Creek event venue at Double D Ranch. Located in the central Michigan town of Lake, Walker's Creek offers an outdoor setting for weddings, corporate events, and more. Walker's Creek event venue, wcvenue.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoor Rama at Novi's Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, the trout pound, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoor Rama in Novi. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hand. Lord above, I love this land, I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again, I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man, that's where I'm from and I'll show you my